Welcome to my shop. My name is Steve and in this video I'm going to show you how I cut holly inlays to cover the keys for the fitted lid box. So let's get over to the workbench. This is the test and setup piece and that's a W0 Hoffman key that's been recessed. Let's see how deep it is. This has been recessed right at two millimeters. The first step is, is to create a smooth edge. This smooth edge serves one purpose and one purpose only, to aid in the transfer of a pattern such that you can cut the, the bow ties. So now I'll take this to the saw and rip off a piece that is greater than two millimeters thick. I'll probably shoot for two and a half, but I'm not going to show that in the interest of time. That's pr a pretty basic ripping operation. So I've trimmed the, the piece of holly offcut to about six inches in length. To create a pattern to apply to this, I went and I took three measurements off of, of, the, off of one of these keys, the height, the width, and the neck size. I took those measurements to, the, to a CAD program and I created a series of patterns, the exact size of the cross-sectional profile of that key, and printed them out on a laser jet printer. If you use an inkjet printer, uh, I would recommend making a photocopy of it to get that on a, uh, get a toner that you can actually transfer. For holly, um, my preferred method is to use a household iron, tape that down to the material and iron over it to get you a good transfer of the material. Obviously, if you're using a darker wood as an accent, that won't work, so uh, the best method, in my opinion, for that is to use a, a spray adhesive on your wood and then, in, in essence, glue your pattern down. Because obviously, those dark lines will not be visible on a darker wood. And I've, and I've got a household iron. I just put it on the high setting. And what I'll do is I'm just going to hold this iron and transfer that material, transfer that toner to the holly. Okay, and let's see how that I see how that looks. The wood's pretty hot, so. So now I've taken my toner and I've transferred it. So this is the pattern I got from the transfer. Yeah, obviously it wasn't complete in, in some areas like in this, probably just because I didn't have enough pressure there. But this, now I've got my pattern transferred to my uh, holly stock. So I've got the shooting board set up now, uh, my pattern, and my next step will be to take a hand plane. And what I want is the edge of this parallel to my pattern but not touching the pattern. So I'll, I'll make several passes here. Okay, so I've got this hand plane down to where the, the edge is just shy. Probably take one, one more pass. But I still show the pattern. And the next step is, and normally I would do this to both sides, so I'll do that off camera and then I'll, then I'll come back to the next step. I'm going to take a scrap piece of hardwood. What I like to do, I've got some double stick tape here. I'm going to stick this down. And what I want to do is separate the pattern. The way I like to do that is I'll take the offcut or well, this is the offcut, this is the remaining piece. And I'll provide a spacer there because I want to provide support to a steel ruler such that I can hold this and the ruler won't be flopping around on me. And I'm going to position this ruler such that it's between the patterns, a utility knife, and take multiple light passes around this is two and a half millimeters thick material so you, you really you don't want to take it all in one pass And 
and then I'll just now I've got my holly pattern separated and I can go back to the shooting board for it but while this is stuck down I'm going to go ahead and do the other piece so now that I've got my strip separated it's back to the shooting board so I'm at the shooting board now these are my three strips I'll work with the outside strips because I'm, I'm very close on uh, to the pattern on one side, the other one's just going to require more work. Now holding these pieces at a shooting board with that thin, I've got a little rabbit here on the end so I even have less support. So in order to do this, what I've done is taken a scrap piece of wood, it needs to be longer than this piece, and you need to create a manual hold down clamp. And the way I did that was I just took a rabbit plane and created a small ledge here on this corner of this pine. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, you can see it at that angle. And what I'll do is I'll use that as a hold down clamp for the workpiece. And the first thing I want to do is for the cut edge, I just cut that edge on the um, at that scrap piece of wood and I just want to take this and straighten that edge up kind of go a little closer than what I was and I'm, I'm, I got both lines parallel. So I've taken my test piece and what I want to do is to plane this piece of wood down to the pattern trying to keep it equal on both sides such that the width of this bridges across those dovetail slots. And I'm not quite there yet. Looks like I got a little ways to go. And I'll just evenly remove material from both sides and I guess I theoretically you'd be all the way down to the pattern but we'll see how that goes so I'll take a couple of passes on both sides just to keep an equal amount what I really want is my pattern such that that the bow tie stays in the center of the, of the piece so see where I am here after taking two more passes And I am, I am right there now. So this work piece is, so my holly inlays are just bridging into that gap such that it just barely fits. Now that I've completed the work at the shooting board, I've got parallel edges that are close to the lines. Uh, ideally, this center line of these bow ties would be right in the center. And I don't know whether it is or not, but it's close by eye. And this is hand planed such that the width of this just bridges across the dovetail slots in the corner. So I'm going to use this as a guide for when I cut these. I'm going to try to, to keep this on screen. So you know, what I probably ought to do is just why don't I just draw a circle as an aid? Because I'm horrible with uh, keeping this on screen uh, as I'm doing this work. So, but the first step I'm going to do, I like to to keep this long because it gives me control over over my uh, workpiece. I don't really like cutting these off in little pieces uh, until I absolutely have to. So I've got my magnifiers on. And what I like to do is anchor the corner of the chisel in a hard block of wood. This is a piece of maple. And what I want to do is use this to go from this point to that point and just get it off square. So I'll anchor that chisel in the piece of the wood. And then I'll just cut across to the opposite side corner and shear the piece off. When that's done, I will repeat the process, except now I'm going to go from this point on the corner to the center of the neck. And notice I'm not really moving the chisel around, I'm using the, moving the workpiece around. And then I'll just go to the opposite side, and it's probably going to be in a shadow here because I'm seeing a shadow.
and if I need to clean the inside corner out I'll use that use a scalpel to do that and that looks pretty good you see where I am on screen here see if I can get that closer yeah it's not going to focus that close here we go so I've cut the notch now I'm going to take this to my trim board and I won't put that on camera because I don't want to be moving this camera around all over the place so now I have a small piece of holly and there's no way I'm going to hold this with my finger so what I like to do is take a knife point of a exact I'm using an exacto knife it can be whatever you choose and I'll repeat the process here but I'll be moving the piece around I'll anchor the, the chisel in the hardwood and then I'll go across just like I did on the other side I'll go point to point and then I'll just shear that off point to point and I will repeat the process to go from the point to the neck What I like to do is take my test piece and make sure that dovetail fits in that slot. And it, and it should not slide in. If it slides in loosely, you need to start over because that's, uh, that's too loose of a fit. You want it to be snug, but not too tight. You don't want to have to drive it in with a hammer. So let me back out and I'll show you how I glue these in position. Okay, so now I'm going to be using a gel CA glue to glue the bow tie into the dovetail slots. I will not be using an accelerator on this because accelerators often have acetone in them that has a tendency to have adverse reactions to uh, acrylic and, and polycarbonate. It tends to cloud them if they come in contact and since this is my lid here that will be acrylic. You don't want that to happen. I, I like the thick or the gel CA glues because it, the thin and the medium glues just tend to wick down into the slot so it kind of goes away from where I want it. So I'll just take some CA adhesive and then I'll take my knife get this just started. Now I'll take a small block of wood. We'll press that key into place. Then I'll take a paper towel. And wipe the excess off. So now I've got a dovetail key that's standing just slightly proud. But choke up on your chisel and then just gently take some gentle passes off the sharp edges there. I'll just choke up on the chisel, trim this across. Generally what I like to do is kind of go approximately to the center and then go at it from the other side.
And this is how I cover the dovetail keys with holly inlays. So I thank you for watching this. I hope this has been helpful to you. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.